promote that Samaro language. And now let's uh, head over to the CNMI, guys, where Tomas Maglotnia is standing by. Where are you at this morning, Tomas? Hi, Chris. Sorry, we wanted to bring you views of uh, the Bird Island and Grotto area, but uh, our connection wasn't just uh, wasn't strong enough. So uh, we're here just before entering that road, uh, leading you to those areas uh, in front of the uh, Saipan sign right, right here yeah. in the northern part of Saipan, what? where a lot of people are taking photos. Usually this place would be bustling with tourists uh, right. and uh, visitors, but of course in this pandemic, uh, uh, we're seeing uh, less of those these days. Uh, but uh, as we reported last night, uh, the CNMI, uh, continues to address its COVID-19 uh, battle and uh, they unfortunately reported uh, the 24th death and yesterday we reported on a story about the CNMI uh, vaccination rate being over 100%. Uh, lots of people asking if that was just CNMI math. Uh, here to say that it's not that CNMI math. Come on, uh, come fact, on to uh, us. We we were able to uh, we were able to talk with the public health in Saipan. They were telling us that it, it indicates that there's been uh, maybe an undercount in the census, but also the CNMI vaccinates military officials here, military personnel, and uh, also visitors uh, who uh, wish to avail of vaccination. And so, uh, if you notice in, in the reports, uh, they're not reporting the fully vaccinated rate anymore. They're just reporting boosters, and so about 54 percent. Uh, people have uh, gotten their booster here, uh, given that uh, most uh, a near perfect uh, amount of the population has uh, gotten their vaccination. Uh, want to share a little bit of what's happening today uh, here in the CNMI, but first wanted to show you this clip of uh, Dr. Lily uh, Muldoon. Uh, and uh, Dr. Muldoon is the medical director for public health. And uh, she kind of explains uh, what the CNMI can expect in the next a few weeks when it comes to this Omicron search. So take a listen to this clip. I prefer it in graph forms. I think it really helps us be able to visualize where we were and where we're going. But there's a few important things on this chart that I want to point out that I think are critical. The first is the number of deaths that we've had from COVID so far, which is a 23, I've also seen 24 total deaths this entire pandemic. That is phenomenal. That puts our case fatality rate at less than 0.35%. That is magnitudes lower than the rest of the US. And why is that? It's not necessarily because people here in the CNMI are much healthier than the rest of the world and we have stronger immune systems to be able to fight Omicron or COVID or that we're seeing a different virus. It's not that. It's because we have had time to develop our protection. We have had time to vaccinate our population. We have had time to get our um, population boosted. And also we're lucky that now that we're fighting this disease, we actually have therapeutics available. So when people do get sick, they're able to get treated. The majority of the people that were getting sick and dying at the beginning of the pandemic around the world did not have that opportunity. So in many ways, we're very lucky here. Um, the other thing I want to just point out is the high level of vaccination. And the next few slides are going to be about how vaccinations have been able to be protective around the world and specifically here. So next slide, please. So this is um, from the CDC. This is nationwide data. And I think that many of us are familiar with this information. Basically what this slide is showing us is that those who are vaccinated and those who are boosted have a much higher protection than those who are unvaccinated. And so you can see that the, um, the bottom axis is over time and the Y axis is the incidence in population. So in this side, we're looking at the number of cases and um, in the red box is the Omicron surge. And so you can see on the top line that those who are not vaccinated have a much higher incidence rate of contracting COVID as compared to those who have a primary series only, which means that's their first two shots and um, those who are boosted are much more protected. Next slide. And unsurprisingly, the data coming from CNMI shows a very similar trend. Here you can see it's reflective of the number of cases and we can, um, the red line shows those who are not fully vaccinated. The green line shows those who are fully vaccinated without a booster. And the blue line shows those who are fully vaccinated with a booster. And similar to what we've seen around the world and the US mainland, those who are vaccinated are protected. And those who are vaccinated plus a booster are that much more protected to even contract the disease at all. Next slide. 
Similarly, um, the previous slides were talking about cases, and this slide talks about um, hospitalizations um, and deaths. And um, you can see here that we're having a spike of cases during Omicron, and hospital admissions and deaths are kind of uh, following behind. Next slide. Um, and similar to the rest of the US, the, um, we've shown that being vaccinated and boosted, again, provides this level of protection, not just about getting infected, but also provides a protection from needing to be hospitalized and becoming very sick with the disease. So the red line there is those who are not fully vaccinated compared to those who are fully boosted in the blue line. And you can see that those who are not vaccinated have a 14 times higher rate of hospitalization and death than those who are not. Next slide. So some facts for you to, that we want to share, which is different from what we were speaking about in November uh, during our last press conference. The Omicron surge is here. We cannot deny it. Um, we do know that the Omicron is less severe than the previous Delta variant, um, but because so many more people are getting it, it's still a danger to us. Um, so the Omicron is more contagious, meaning it can be passed more quickly and easily from person to person, but those who do get sick are less likely to be suffering in the hospital or um, dying from it. If we do have uh, enough people who are getting Omicron at the same time and those who are the most vulnerable are becoming infected, it is possible that our hospital system can be overrun. However, I'm not predicting that right now because of our level of preparation. We're seeing large amounts of Omicron spreading through our community rapidly. And we've been able to scale up in order to respond to the number of cases that we're seeing. For example, we have the Cloverville Community Center. It's a great resource for people to be able to go and get tested and get resources and be referred for treatment. We've also opened the MCATS tent, which are across the street from the emergency department. And just this week, we've been able to take on magnitude loads, more people who are coming in that need testing and need treatment. And so we're able to scale up quickly. And so right now, I don't predict that our hospitals are going to be overrun, but I do want to make sure that we're continuing to protect ourselves and that we're prepared just in case we see even larger surges. And um, I'll speak more a little bit later on the treatments that are available, but we do have several treatments for people. All right, so that was uh, Dr. Lily Muldoon with the uh, CNMI Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation Public Health shedding some light on uh, what the past few months have looked like. Again, for viewers, just to remind you all, uh, the CNMI surge just started in October. So the past few months have been really packed with uh, the COVID response, the vaccination effort, uh, the therapeutics. Uh, tonight on Primetime, what you can look forward to from the CNMI is that the uh, uh, lawmakers at the legislature will be hosting uh, a panel of uh, officials from the governor's authorized representative here in the CNMI uh, to uh, Homeland Security, Public Health, uh, the COVID-19 task force, and possibly the public school system uh, to answer questions about what uh, what the road looks like ahead. Uh, we're going to get updates uh, on the quarantine facilities. Uh, there is no more on arrival testing. Uh, quarantine is essentially scrapped here. If you're fully vaccinated, uh, we're going to uh, possibly hear more about uh, ARP funds that have been spent. These are a lot of things that people have been wanting to get a status update on throughout the uh, past few months, uh, given that most of the COVID responses Dr. Muldoon was mentioning has happened uh, just in the past few months. So uh, Chris Bree, Jace Vic, uh, and Joe Sir, that's a uh, uh, some of the headlines here in the CNMI, and we'll continue to bring you the latest throughout the region uh, throughout the next few weeks. Thanks, and Tomas. Tomas. Thanks, guys. All right, hey guys, guys. Before we go, real quick, I just want to say you guys know what this is, right? The unmistakable box and the logo of when you receive like a new package. Uh, we don't normally receive uh, USPS parcels like this early, but shout out to the folks at the U.S. Postal Service who are really, really going above and beyond. I just talked to a guy outside, Pete Metanotnia from Malolo. Just met him, super nice guy. He said everybody is, you know, like, they want to make sure that we all get our stuff and everything like that. So shout out to Pete and his team over there. At, uh, and, you know, next time you see your letter carrier, like, going around, tell them you appreciate them, because they're working really, really hard. Yeah, what's your order, Jay? What's in the box, bro? No, the funny thing is, this isn't even mine. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> One of my coworkers. Oh, that's a federal offense. You're touching other people's mail. <laughs> I'm not opening it. I'm just, I'm using it as an as illustration. It's just a prop. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. and We're coming back with Senator uh, Sabina Perez right after the break. The show continues and it's all brought to you by Pacific Point.